Welcome to a night of total terror. A land of swirling mists, full moons, and darkness. A mirror land where fell beasts reign supreme and humankind skulks in the shadows afraid and oppressed. A plane of darkness separate from the rest of the multiverse. This is the world of Ravenloft, a gothic horror-based campaign setting published in 1990. The series took many of the things well known to D&D, but rather than changing those tropes, they totally altered the tone. Over 90% of horror is not what kind of monsters exist or how lethal those monsters are to your player character, it's atmosphere. Horror is based on woolly, difficult to describe things like mood and emotion. A vague sense of unease that the world is not what you thought it was. Dungeons and Dragons has always had zombies, vampires, and other horror elements. But crucially, they were horror-themed objects transposed to a high fantasy setting. The worlds were still heroic medieval adventures, not tales of terror. In Ravenloft, the entire game is one of lurking, pulsing dread and fear. Your characters are just as much survivors as adventurers. And the monsters aren't stats to slay for XP. They're alien creatures that can tear away your sanity as quickly as your flesh. You have to erase a lot of the preconceptions you have about enemies for Ravenloft. Imagine them as if you're actually there, meeting a revolting, rotting corpse. The smell overpowers your nostrils, the eyes have been gouged out by scavenging corvidae, and the fingertips have shattered and broken off when it clawed its way out of its own coffin. Obviously flavor text is damned important, and I say ham it up. This is Ravenloft, you have to be as spooky as possible. D&D is a game where fighting ferocious monsters is par for the course, and it's up to the game master to really sell the game as different. If you're DMing this thing, make sure to play for all the horror tropes you can. That's why everyone is there. Try not to make anything taken for granted. Maybe introduce the same monsters, but with a twist that you invent yourself that, that makes them completely different from what the player characters know. For instance, silver is known to destroy werewolves. However, maybe it's another metal for you. You have to invent your own type of werewolf-killing gear that the players have to find. Put them in the position of the people in the horror movies trying to figure this out. Not jaded people that have seen a thousand horror movies and know exactly what to do from day one. Having a plan set there? That's straightforward wrong. You have to make sure that they have no plan to follow, and everything goes according to your plan. A totally fresh approach to an old formula. A cloak of mystery and fear should cover all investigations, and any resolutions to quests should leave things up in the air. Like the party is always escaping by the skin of its teeth and could still be destroyed by the vile creatures it only barely slowed down. For the writhing shroud of mist and uncertainty about your fate is vital to enjoying the game. This is the story of Dracula, a creature who destroys all whom he touches. Dracula the terrifying, the feared, who sleeps in the tombs of the dead by day and arises at night to inflict his terror upon the innocent and the unsuspecting. In the grand cosmology of Dungeons and Dragons, Ravenloft is a demi-plane. So what exactly is that? Well, it means Ravenloft is separate from the rest of existence. Technically, it is part of the ethereal plane, the cosmic sea that touches the entire prime material plane but it's almost impossible to access by normal means like teleportation. It's a totally separate area, a little pocket zone that's kind of apart from the rest of everything. Thematically, it adds an air of mystery about the whole world. What exactly are the rules of this place? The DM is free to explore changing certain rules about the game to suit the needs of the story. It kicks the standard D&D player out of the standard Forgotten Realms high fantasy planet and, and into a confusing world whose very existence is an enigma. That helps to keep the players off balance. Remember that the unknown is the primal drive of fear, and having an entire plane of existence that's different from all the others helps begin that process. The entire plane is surrounded by the misty border. The mists of Ravenloft are a supernatural force that emit no alignment, sentience, or magical residue, but they are a powerful preternatural force. The mists, if they or the dark powers choose, may swallow up anyone in the multiverse at any time and transport them to Ravenloft. The demiplane of dread cannot be escaped by almost any means. Once you enter it, it is virtually impossible to leave. Even a wish spell or clerics calling to their deities won't work. 
You're trapped by strange forces that have dominion over even the power of the gods and magic. There's an entire world inside the plane with dozens of kingdoms, each of them ruled over by an evil dark lord. The lord himself is trapped within Ravenloft, and unlike normal people who can travel between realms, he is trapped within his domain. These lords are virtually invincible and should only be fought at the outer extremes of a campaign like the climactic final battle. The lords are each exciting characters with their own tragic backstory, often falling into the evil mixed with sadness theme of emotive gothic horror standards. They all have a dark past and now have been twisted to evil by their suffering. The Dark Lords are prisoners of the plane and frequently seek to escape its confines by any means, including butchering adventurers or setting them off on impossible quests to find lost artifacts. A Dark Lord may instantly attack a player and rip them apart, but other Dark Lords are more subtle and may try to use the players and won't really do anything but appear to help them while serving his own needs. The stereotypical realm of Ravenloft is Barovia. Barovia is a perfect Middle European name that evokes an image of the Hohenzollern or Habsburg empires, a distant land far away from the more civilized areas of Western Europe. The other realms all have evocative names like Lamordia, Demontlu, Necropolis, Forlorn, and Scythicus. The realm of Barovia is run by the original lord of Ravenloft, Strad von Zarovich, another great name. Strahd's story is a dark and twisted version of the tale of Dracula, about a dark warrior who rages and fumed at the world after the love of his life is lost. He began as lawful good, but his dark, horrible actions led him to becoming evil. The dark nobleman made a deal with unknown forces, probably the dread forces or dark forces of Ravenloft, to preserve his life evermore and attain great power. But his evil provoked the transfer of his kingdom and all its people deep inside the realm of mists. That was the first kingdom to wander over the foggy moors and create the nucleus of Ravenloft. Since that time, hundreds of years have passed and Strahd still sits as the Lord of Barovia, an everlasting vampire mourning his lost life and love. There are many other lords, each with their own dark backstory, such as Azalin the Lich, a powerful mage who executed his own son, or Adam, the sentient construct created by Dr. Victor Mordenheim, mad scientist of Lamordia. All of them have tragic lives, seething with passion and selfish rage. Almost all of the Dark Lords are intensely self-focused and fall into a stereotype of brooding, lonesome villains. If asked, they would probably see themselves as Byronic heroes, forever pining away at the utter darkness of life and the vagaries of fate, staring blankly out at the swirling mists, knowing how the wickedness of life will never leave their black souls. Life is pain. Life is only pain. We're all taught to believe in happy fairy tale endings. But there's only blackness, dark, depressing loneliness that eats at your soul. Shallow life. Drowning alone, I gasp for air. Cold creeps over a pale skin. There is sadness so deep it pulls me down. Happiness dies in the deep, dark sea. Obviously, Ravenloft is a perfect place for a lot of humor. Barovia is a traditional Central or Eastern European kingdom that you could find in a hundred vampire movies. Castles loom frowning over the steep hills coated in tangles of woods and thorns. A harsh nobility cruelly stamps down the boot of the state onto the weak, broken lower classes. The peasantry roll their wobble ewes when they speak and are deeply suspicious and afraid of outsiders. Especially foolish adventurers who are going to provoke a fight with Strahd von Zarevich himself. There are castles and churches with twisting gothic spires looming over a desolate, murky landscape. Beasts with no name prowl the night, thirsting for blood and flesh. All of these elements can be found in Bram Stoker's Dracula, Carmilla, Frankenstein, or the Castle of Otranto. It's a world of dreary, shadowed violence, oppression, and madness. Now, if you're interested in Ravenloft, you've probably already read those works, but just in case you haven't, go read them and the others in the gothic horror world. They're going to get you set for what you should expect for most of Ravenloft and provide you with all kinds of background information to what you can add to the campaign. But not all of Ravenloft looks like a Hammer Horror Dracula movie. In the centuries after Strahd's arrival, dozens of new realms have appeared in the Land of Mists. They fell into the misty world and trapped dozens of cities and races in a stranglehold of mystery and horror. There are so many of them there now that it's essentially as large as the Prime World, and, there are, and there's as infinite variety as the Forgotten Realms. There's almost every kind of place imaginable, from desert strongholds straight out of the mummy, to bayous reminiscent of voodoo-ridden Louisiana, to steaming jungles with an Indian subcontinent feel like Travashti. Almost every kind of landscape is within Ravenloft, so use your imagination, branch out. Don't feel limited by any means to merely western or gothic horror. Horror tales are universal in human culture. 
Every society has stories of dark and hideous monsters lurking in the wild areas ready to pounce on humankind. It might even behoove the DM to set the campaign in a deliberately alien land, where they can't speak the language, understand the culture, or feel at all at home. Make the people as different and alien as possible to increase the sense of dislocation and confusion and thus fear. You're more likely to act violently or negatively to people you don't understand, so it may increase their propensity to do horrible things, and thus incur the interest of the dark powers. People in Indonesia, Nigeria, and Mexico have just as much fiendish ghosts and ghouls in their mythology as Europeans. You may have to look wider in the library than Bram Stoker to find a truly unknown creature to scare the players with. Do some research and see what you can find about roads less well-traveled and incorporate them into your story. What haunted places does India or China have? Search for monsters from Karatur or other non-Western D&D texts. Incorporate some of Lafcadio Hearn's ghost tales from Japan. Freshen things up. Another point about dislocation for D&D is gunpowder. Typically, Dungeons & Dragons RPGs can take place from any time period between the Bronze Age and the Middle Ages. But when gunpowder is invented, or when it becomes commonplace, rather, that's when it ends. Gothic horror, on the other hand, is typically set well into the gunpowder period, and there are some Ravenloft realms with settings as late as the early 19th century. That can be especially jarring for players. They may not like it or feel it's medieval enough for a D&D game, but it may not feel Gothic horror enough without them. Some of Ravenloft's lands, like Demontlu, have a late 18th century feel to them, complete with arrogant, bewigged, powdered aristocrats. Explore what you think will make for the best game. Or maybe drive them between areas, start in a Middle Ages zone, and then move on to one of the gunpowder zones right after a few hours or a few gameplay sessions, rather, and you can freshen things up the best that way. However you choose to craft your particular section of fear in Ravenloft, remember the paranoiac drives of gothic horror. Remember the difference between terror and horror. Terror is a biological process where our bodies flood our brains with chemicals to force us to recognize danger. It can be produced by almost anything. Being attacked by a criminal, being in a battle, seeing a bear trying to attack you, our car's brakes failing, anything that could be hazardous to our health produces an evolutionary reaction to preserve our lives. But horror is different. Horror can only happen with the higher functioning brain. Horror is, quite simply, knowledge. Horror is comprehension of the world in a way we did not yet understand. We are able to know something about the darkness or evil of the world, its inhabitants or ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Why, he's mad. Look at his eyes. Why, the man's gone crazy. Horror is a reaction of the mind or the soul, not the body. When Charles Dexter Ward in The Strange Case, written by H.P. Lovecraft, discovers the laboratory of his distant ancestor, he is in no physical danger. Yet he is overcome with revulsion and fright when he realizes the reanimated creatures brought back to life in the 17th century in that very lab, hundreds of years before, are still moving deep in their subterranean pits. They cannot harm him, and yet the knowledge that the foul alchemical sorcery that stirred them from death has never sent them back is a horrific moment. These moments of horror are not just storytelling, they have a gameplay function as well. Periodically, the DM should make a character go through a horror check. There is no set rule as to when it should occur, the DM has to decide on his own. The check is done with a severe penalty if the horror is spurred by a loved one or a friend in mortal peril. If they fail the check, then the PC must accept one of several mental disorders that can last for weeks or more, including obsessive personality, revulsion, or senseless rage. The other PCs will simply have to deal with his insanity until it passes, making for excellent role-playing opportunities between a sane and a mentally unwell character. A more severe version of this is played out by the Madness Checks. Typically brought on by exposure to a magical item, the Madness is a broader and longer-lasting type of insanity. It can range from schizophrenia to paranoia and depression. The Horror Checks add a negative personality trait to a character for a brief time, which can make him difficult to get along with. The Madness checks, on the other hand, add a serious impairment, which can make it dangerous to travel with him, or he may not be able to perform his functions as an adventurer successfully. Also, the Madness is often permanent and must be dealt with through magical, psionic, or traditional means of mental health improvement. Locking your friend up in a sanitarium, likely present in one or more advanced realms, and removing him from play for a while may be your only option. Some of you who have played the role-playing game Call of Cthulhu may notice the similarity between the two. The more you learn about Cthulhu or the Elder Ones or the Ancient Gods, the more insane you become. Both games insist on harshly affecting the player's minds when confronting the darkness of the world or the cosmos. Cthulhu-like elements, as we saw with Bloodborne, can fit snugly into a gothic horror world. 
The emphasis on fear and the destructive nature to the human mind and soul it produces unites both subgenres. The goal is to make the characters frightened, not just for their lives, but for their sanity and souls, and to do that you'll need monsters, ravenous hordes of them ready to strike. The monsters of Ravenloft are well known to anyone with even a passing acquaintance with popular culture. The classic universal horror creatures of Vampire, Werewolf, Mummy, and Frankenstein. Part of the fun of Ravenloft is seeing all the horror movie tropes in a familiar gothic setting. But don't stop there. The next step, vital to a Ravenloft campaign, is to make these breakfast cereal spooks into creatures that once again inspire terror. It takes a fine DM and a lot of work to recast the standard monsters as real villains. Once again, you'll need to remember the flavor text. Always let your words drip with purple prose and linger over how hideous it would be to actually encounter some of these things in the real world. Your players must be clinging to life, hanging on by the skin of their teeth, like a real human would be in such a world. Perhaps the players are fighting a coven and smite the foul witches, only to fall back in terror when the witch corpses begin to explode with blood and bone. The neck of each witch rips itself off of its human trunk to reveal a ghastly string of intestines and organs. The head deftly lifts itself up into the air, still trailing the pulsing, living viscera, and flies towards you with a deafening shriek. Always keep them guessing. Another aspect particularly favored by gothic strands of horror is the victim-villain. The Wolfman, Dr. Jekyll, and any number of people afflicted with vampirism are evil, but are also the main characters. A werewolf is just an animal, after all. But if you were to become a werewolf, feeling your sinews stretch and tear, your nose lengthen into a snout, bones pull you down onto all fours. It's a living nightmare. The horror is the transformation of a player character into a creature of terror. Could he keep it secret from the rest of the group? Would you help him if he's stricken with lycanthropy or a terrible curse that causes evil spirits to haunt him every night? Nothing is more terrifying than watching yourself become the monster and Ravenloft abounds in hexes, curses, and magical diseases to force the evil of the mists into a party. The land is itself a cursed place, close to the grave and dancing on the knife edge of insanity. And most of the strings in this realm are pulled by those enigmatic creatures known as the dark powers of Ravenloft. Come with us if you dare, into a twilight world of unspeakable horror. You must die! Everybody must die! <laughs> What is the most mysterious thing in the universe? The Lady of Pain? An obscure dead god trying to worm its way back into existence? The Where the race of mind flayers came from? No. It's the Dark Powers. No one really knows enough about them to really study them. Some doubt they even exist. But few in Ravenloft would contest their existence. Like horror itself, it's just something you have to feel to understand. An itching sense of dread that someone or something is watching you. Much of the things in Ravenloft, and likely the creation of the Demiplane itself, is due to the Dark Powers. They control the mists, the realms, and most importantly, who can and cannot leave Ravenloft. They draw people in, sense the fates of darkness and mortal lives, and install those doomed souls as dark lords of each realm. Why they do this is still in the dark. Are they good? Perhaps dispensers of justice dedicated to relentless punishment of evil beings? Or are they awful villains who just like torturing people for sport? like they live off of the suffering they produce and are farming the Dark Lords for their pain and misery. Whatever their reasons, they are the undisputed masters of the plane and have, so far, like the Lady of Pain, frustrated all entities, godly or no, who have tried to interfere with their realm. The Dark Powers just feel fearful, and to ordinary folks, even mentioning them, like the Lady of Pain, is ill-fated. Best to avoid them at all costs, lest their wrath spill onto you. And that wrath manifests itself in the awful counterpart to the fear and madness checks, the dreaded powers check. Being an adventurer is a difficult job. You have to take on the problems of others, put yourself in great danger on a regular basis, and there's no guarantee you'll succeed or even be thanked afterwards. Sometimes the PCs may go down or be led down by a cunning DM athwart the path of evil. Perhaps it's because the characters have been pushed to the edge by a particularly bad force, or, or they are so overwhelmed by an opponent they can only successfully respond with dishonorable acts. Or maybe your PCs are just a bunch of evil blackguards. If an adventurer does something that is especially dark, cruel, or villainous, he will shine brightly to the evil forces that control Ravenloft. The act must be notably malevolent, or part of a long string of evil acts. A one-off won't do unless it betrays a serious void of morality, like torture or murder of an innocent. If it meets the requirements, the dark forces will notice the character and alter him in some way. The alteration is one that mixes benefit with harm to drive home a sense of poetic justice. 
For instance, a person who abandons a town to the ravages of the Black Plague in order to pursue greedy self-aggrandizement elsewhere may take on the features of a rat. His sense of smell will improve. Perhaps he can speak to rats and were rats. His teeth become powerful enough to chew through wood or damage an opponent. But he'll also take on rat-like features or grow a tail and thick fur. All is not lost, though, for you may recover yourself through penitent acts. They should be long and difficult, but ultimately possible for PCs to remove his terrible curse by acts of great good and a genuine change of heart. Go too far down the path and attract the attention of the powers multiple times, however, and you may end up trapped in Ravenloft forever. Elevated to the demigod-like authority of a dark lord, but trapped in a tiny land to be tortured forever with your sins. Once again, irony is a central focus of what the dark powers want to do. They don't just want to punish you, they want to give you everything you want, and then make you realize that with everything you want, you're trapped and destroyed like you've never been before. The Dark Powers are a perfect way to prevent your PCs from becoming too cocky. It may be possible for very powerful characters to defeat a Dark Lord, but it's impossible to beat the Powers. They are as unto the gods next to mortals, even if they could be understood and studied. And they've defied even that meager probing into their minds and actions. The powers are mysterious and beyond the ken of man, except for perhaps the Vistani. Through my powers of the supernatural, I, and I alone, can bring him to this room tonight. From that place in the deep blackness of death, from which no visitor is to return. Where the sun is seen to rise, and the sun is seen to set. Where the gracious moon comes from the east, in its long journey across the night sky to the west. Wingate Foster, through the powers of Dr. Acula, will again be permitted to walk. The Vistani are a race of wanderers who inhabit any land they choose within Ravenloft. Even though they're largely forgotten about nowadays, the mysterious gypsy people formed a key part of many Gothic horror stories. The Romani are a wandering people originally from India who settled in Europe in the early modern era. Like the real-world gypsies, the Vistani can wander from realm to realm, even through the mists themselves, unharmed. They travel in caravans of covered wagons, wear brightly colored clothing and garish jewelry, and ply a variety of trades including fortune teller, merchant, entertainer, and weaponsmith. Many tricks of performance can be gleaned by a keen-eyed bard who visits a Vistani camp. The Vistani link together all the lands of Ravenloft, playing around and beneath every mystery and horror like a sinister melody announcing the presence of a killer. They arrive as if disgorged by the mists themselves and exit providing more questions than answers. But if you're lucky and show the proper respect or the proper amount of coin, they may be able to guide you to your destination. But they'll never involve themselves in the struggles of others too directly. Even a good Vistani distances himself from endangering himself or his clan for outsiders. They were forced out of their ancient homeland centuries ago and some say made a deal with the dark forces to make Ravenloft their permanent home. Are they hunted by some evil creature whose pursuit can only be staunched by imprisoning themselves in the ultimate hiding place? Or did they make a pact with something foul and loathsome? Did they commit a crime so heinous they would be chased across the plains for all time, unless they hid themselves in the shadows of the realm of mist? The Vistani keep their secrets ever to themselves. In most lands, a Vistana will be cautiously ignored. But in a few realms, such as Nvidia, the persecution and hunting of Vistani is sanctioned by law. The Vistani are known, somewhat accurately, as thieves and tricksters. If discovered by a number of bigoted, lawful groups throughout Ravenloft, they will be imprisoned, expelled, or killed, depending on their mood. Elsewhere, though, the Vistani are free to travel and dispense their strange wisdom to the player character. In the game, Vistani are perfect holders of dark secrets, much as they are in gothic horror fiction. While exploring a wilderness area, a group of PCs may discover a large bonfire deep in the forest. Around it will be a crowd of men and women, strangely attired, some dancing, others cooking, all of them possessing a mystery about them. The Vistani know things about the Demiplane of Dread and its secrets. Many of their women also claim to see into the future and will provide this information for a price. The Vistani should ever remain unknown to the party, another mystery for the Realm of Mists. But they're a great way to guide characters on the ways they need to go in case they get stuck on a mission. And just what sort of mission are those people going on exactly? What is the role of an adventuring party in the dark realm of fog and mists? Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wished to pay me tribute. Tribute? 
You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? Players are necessarily depowered a bit by the severity of evil in Ravenloft. Creating an atmosphere of terror is more important than a grand threat to the world. In a regular D&D game, adventurers are unique folk, a tiny minority of extremely brave and gifted souls who defy fate and forge the world in their own image. Ravenloft is the concentrate version of that story. It's even more unique, even more dangerous and destructive inside a demiplane dedicated to and run by evil. The majority of realms on Toril or Orth are, after all, good or at least neutral. To follow the path of goodness in Ravenloft is like erecting a crucifix in Hell, a bold declaration of anger at villainy and a target of evil. Like light itself, goodness shines brighter the more utter the darkness it finds itself in. Your deeds are going to be even more heroic and even more magnificent in the realm of Ravenloft just because everything is so much more horrible there. The players, be they native or otherwise, will likely need guides to survive in Ravenloft. The heroes may find themselves crossing paths with another gothic horror trope, the Explainer. Designed during the Victorian era, the Explainer is the expert who can discard his fear and rationally work out what needs to be done by the heroes, to understand the monsters they face. Detective fiction was also invented during the same age, and like a detective, the Explainer can apply brilliant deduction and reason to solve a seemingly intractable problem. The great explainer of Ravenloft is Dr. Rudolf Van Richten. His expert guides to fighting monsters are well worth perusing. Dr. Van Richten may also be encountered by the players at some point if they need a boost of knowledge. He may also be used to draw the character into a broader story rather than mere survival. Dr. Van Richten, or someone like him, may be able to give the characters purpose, to explain to them why they are here in Ravenloft and how they might be able to get out, or barring that, how to deal a lethal blow to evil in the Misty Realm. Why exactly are your characters present in the Land of Mists? Were they sucked in from another plane? A, a good way to start Ravenloft and keep an adventuring party fresh is to wait for the first early level adventure of your characters to wrap up. When they're maybe level 6 or 7 and need a fresh challenge, you could throw a curveball at them and send them tumbling into the Land of Nightmares. It will also vastly increase the sense of horror and mystery if they were not expecting to be thrown into a Ravenloft game. Some players may protest if they're kicked off Toril and land in Barovia, but consider it a sneak attack from the DM to heighten the fear of the gothic setting. They also can't maximize their character's abilities for use in Ravenloft. The party itself is in the role of victim, an innocent who was suddenly accosted by dark forces and made to suffer the tortures of the damned. If their goal is to escape, will that conflict with a bigger goal of defeating evil? Or will they need to crush one of the lords in order to find a way out? Or maybe they'll want to stay there. Maybe they'll be roped into a conflict while trying to find out where they are and what they can do to return. There is unlikely to be a happy ending in a Ravenloft campaign. Even if a Lord of Darkness is defeated, the Dark Powers are unlikely to allow a troop of adventurers to escape, especially if they violated their will by trying to harm one of the Lords. The shadowy forces running the land are difficult to pin down. One person they may let escape, another they may kill thoughtlessly. Paladins in Ravenloft are especially damned. Damned to be a beacon of good calling out to every evil thing in a land of darkness. They can be discovered far more easily by enemies and laid into with greater savagery. A paladin in Ravenloft is like a festering wound the evil forces of the land are forever seeking to close. Many abilities of a paladin won't function correctly in the Land of Mists. He is the most needed character as a champion of righteousness, but also the most in danger of assault and torment. Being in Ravenloft is likely the ultimate challenge for a paladin character. Priests find it very difficult to turn undead in Ravenloft, so powerful is the force of undeath in that realm. They may also, at the DM's discretion, face severe penalties like the Paladin if they serve a powerfully good-aligned deity. Druids may also find that the laws of nature they are accustomed to do not function in Ravenloft. The Dark Forces, or Dark Lords, or perhaps a powerful undead group corrupts the land around them. Ravenloft has a lot of evil variants of normal creatures, such as evil dryads, evil treants, and so forth. A druid may be repulsed and disgusted by the very land he draws power from by its taint of evil. Rangers may also find themselves troubled to find their animal companions do not respond to their commands if they conflict with the powers of the realm. Fighters and rogues do not suffer the standard penalty as the other ones do. But barbarians may not like the modern, civilized feel of many areas. 
especially advanced ones with muskets, cannon, and other gunpowder weapons. The primitive superstition of many barbarians is also likely not to find a happy place inside Ravenloft. They may be overwhelmed by all of the evil and horror and otherworldliness around them. Races other than human may find it a bit troubling in Ravenloft. The overwhelming majority of the inhabitants are human. Elves and dwarves do not even have the typical holds and fastnesses they can retreat to as power bases. They are even more outnumbered than usual. They may also arouse suspicion for being different among the more xenophobic small villages. A hostile attitude of mistrust and lack of empathy pervade the realm of mists. But before you judge them too harshly, remember that they are surrounded by evil that sinks fear into them on a daily basis. This is what they grew up around every day. Close-knit communities survive better by mistrusting the outsider and sticking to their own kind. Players must accept a different kind of adventure in Ravenloft. Perhaps the word adventure is not even right for that land. PCs will find themselves confronted by a world diametrically opposed to them and their kind, refusing to succumb to the gnawing terror and misery of evil's cold grip on your mind is just as much a battle as slaying a werewolf. Comfort should be denied the heroes in this world. A steady, simple life of slaying enemies and exploring conflicts with the setting and mood. It's one of lingering dread, as the name of the demiplay in itself implies, a cold hand sliding down your neck and giving them a chill. That's the way you should always feel playing Ravenloft. Like all spooky fiction, it's great for giving you the feeling of someone walking over your grave. And that's why I love this setting so much. Horror is my favorite genre. I spend the entire year immersed in the subject, in film, television, books, and RPGs. And Ravenloft is that magic place I dreamed about as a kid where Halloween exists all the time, every day. Ghosts, curses, lost loves, and vampires abound in the dark setting of fright. Ravenloft is fun every day of the year, but it's especially enticing around October when the ghoul in everyone comes out to play. Some of the Ravenloft source books suggest that life for the average person in Ravenloft is more or less identical to that of being in Toril, but I reject that. If it were that way, then why bother playing in Ravenloft at all? I prefer to ham everything up and make it like a horror movie. At surface value, Ravenloft can seem like Castlevania in Dungeons and Dragons. And adding elements like that is all part of the fun, but it misses something without a sense of the weird and mysterious. Try to present everything in gothic horror terms without resorting to the familiarity of standard gameplay phrases. Maybe dim the lights or find some other way to add a creepy atmosphere to your game room. And above all, keep the players in suspense about what's going on around them. As Lovecraft said, the oldest and strongest type of fear is fear of the unknown. Make your world a hostile, uncomfortable zone of claustrophobic worry and apprehension. Like there's always something lurking over their shoulder that they can never see. Adventuring parties will find themselves as potential victims, not noble souls ready to dispatch the darkness with the flashing of some steel. It's not my favorite D&D setting, that honor goes to Planescape, but Ravenloft is close behind in my ranking of the worlds. Everything about it is spooky, intriguing, and provokes the same mixture of glee and fright I get watching hammer horror films, or going to a haunted house. I can't recommend this setting enough and heartily suggest everyone try it out and enjoy the dread, darkness, and mystery only the misty realm of Ravenloft can give. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video about Ravenloft. I've linked two of my videos here, one of my review of the video game Bloodborne, another one of my review of the Blood War in Planescape. It's a blood fest here. Please like the video if you liked it. Please leave a comment. And please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Thanks so much for it's watching. Over, you idiot. You have lost, and you only have yourselves to blame. So good riddance. Ha 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 ha!